a show of hands, how many people here have heard of the three R's? Reduce, reuse, recycle, and its benefits. Okay, well, how many people here actually practice the three R's in their daily lifestyle? <laughs> okay, thank you. To those who had your hands down, let me change your mind. Due to pollution and extraction, some people believe that our natural systems are past the point where they cannot be recovered. Currently, Earth is the only life-supporting planet in our solar system, and the human population is growing rapidly. According to the United Nations, by the year 2050, we will have a 9.7 billion world population. That's a 35% increase from the population, from the 7.2 billion that we have now. Environmental sustainability is so important to prevent ecological collapse. In today's society, we live in an ecologically damaging cycle of extraction, production, consumption, and landfilling or incineration. The amount of trash an average person produces is baffling. On average, a person produces 4.4 pounds of trash per day. 1,606 pounds a year, and every year, America as a whole produces 254 million tons. And in pounds, that is 508 billion. It's a lot, equivalent to the weight of over a million whales. <laughs> With environmental sustainability in mind, I'm sure the first thing you can think of is recycling. We all know how recycling works. Used items get turned into new product. Sadly, it's not the perfect solution. There's only so much you can recycle. Plastic straws, laminated paper, plastic bags, food stain materials like pizza boxes or used paper plates cannot be recycled. Recycling is not sustainable. Tetra Pak cartons are known to be 100% recyclable, but that doesn't mean that the recycled project, the product is. Plastics and other materials, including tetra pack cartons, are turned into floor mats, panel boards, and roof sheets. And these items, once used to their fullest potential, are nothing but trash. Let's, try, sorry, let's chat about the benefits for a bit, because it's not all that bad. Aluminum, steel, and glass can be recycled infinitely. Reusing such materials can reduce industrial pollution as less raw materials are needs to be extracted from the ecosystem. Plastics can be recycled seven to nine times. With recycling, we can hopefully keep plastics out of the oceans and our bodies. Yes, we all have plastics in our bodies. Even if you don't eat seafood. And yes, plastic pollution is a problem. Recycling is not the perfect solution. If we change all plastic bottles to glass bottles, that will only increase the weight of the cargo and resulting in more trips to transport them from place to, play, to place. That would just increase our carbon footprint. But for now, as responsible consumers, we should start putting recyclables into the right bins. This way, we can keep them out of the landfills for as long as possible. The next imperfect solution is reuse. It means to find purpose for items that cannot be used for its initial purpose anymore. Donating unwanted, good, unwanted items is a, another way of repurposing goods instead of throwing them away. Usable items do not need to be filling up land space. They can be turned into something much better. Old tires can be turned into swings for little kids to play on, or you can clip together pieces of, of waste paper to create a makeshift notepad. There are so many, so many ways that we can tweak our own lifestyles to be a little more environmental friendly. Reduce. It's pretty straightforward. It means to reduce the amount of waste produced. In today's society, I have to admit, it is a challenge. Most items come in packaging, whether plastic, paper, cardboard, or aluminum. Unfinished or inedible food goes straight into the trash. Facial tissues, cotton balls, cotton pads, sanitary waste, all add to the monstrous pile of waste that we already have. Here's what you can do. You can use facial towels instead of facial tissue, or 
tablecloth instead of kitchen towels, refuse plastic bags, and use reusable bags. They're much cuter anyways. And invest in reusable straws because you only need one. And surprisingly, genetic engineering can reduce waste. GMOs. How do you feel about them? Most people are concerned about the safety of them, but fortunately, no significant harm has been tied to um, no significant harm tied to consuming GMOs has been found. Nearly nine out of ten scientists from the American Association for the Advancement of Science say they are generally safe to eat. But when foreign genes are inserted, scientists do not know where they would go. This process could possibly disrupt the genes and create toxins and allergens in food. There was this one case regarding Brazil nuts that happened more than two decades ago. Genes from Brazil nuts were inserted into soybeans to increase the nutritional value. According to lab tests, people who are allergic to Brazil nuts were also allergic to this certain type of soybeans. Scientists found that the allergen 2S albumin protein was also carried over to the soybeans during this genetic modification process. This is why GMOs need to go through rigorous testing before it gets introduced to the market. And the process normally takes 13 years, done by the FDA, the EPA, the USDA, and other organizations. And luckily, these soybeans were never released to the public. GMOs do bring about benefits. Currently, the world eats more than a million pounds of food per minute. By 2050, we will possibly need 70% more to feed a potentially 9.7 billion population. GMO technology can increase harvest. Farmers can have more yield with less resources. Some GMO crops are even more tolerant to harsh weather, such as droughts or colds, or in certain weather conditions due to climate change. Genetic engineering can protect farmers against a potential, potential loss of a season's harvest. This way, we will have more food to sustain the world. Now back to the point of reducing waste. GMOs can reduce waste by increasing shelf life of crops. If you think about it, fruits that are, less, fruits that are wrinkly are less likely to be purchased by the public. And they would end up in the trash to rot, contributing to the mountain of waste that we have. After a Honda, a professor at Purdue University inserted yeast genes into tomatoes. He found that the gene extended the shelf life of tomatoes by a week, as compared to a non-transgenic non tomato. Longer shelf life could hopefully lead to less food waste and more food to sustain the world. You could be thinking, what am I going to do with this information? Genetic engineering is not something that we're capable of, and I understand that, but I'm hoping that you can view GMOs in a more positive light. Here's a method that you can be capable of, though. Composting. With composting, we can reduce human-generated waste. The end, product compo sorry, the end product hummus is not trash. They can be added to soil as an organic fertilizer. This can reduce the need for chemical fertilizers. This does not only reduce waste, but also methane production. When trash rots in landfills, it undergoes a process called anaerobic decomposition, the byproduct of which is methane gas, a greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gases absorb energy and act like a, like a blanket that insulates the earth, trapping heat in. However, the impact of greenhouse gases are all different, and they are measured in GWPs, global warming potential. In this case, 100-year GWPs, based on the energy absorbed by the gases over 100 years. The GWP range for met methane is 28 to 36, while for carbon dioxide, it's only one. Even though carbon dioxide circulates in our climate system for thousands of years, and methane gas only lasts for only about a decade, methane is still much more potent in the short term. Composting, when done right, goes through a process called aerobic decomposition. Aerobic means with oxygen. Oxygen fuels the organisms needed to break down the waste. 
That's why the power needs to be aerated every now and then. Instead of methane gas being a byproduct, carbon dioxide is produced instead. Methane-producing microbes aren't active when oxygen is present. About 30% of the waste we produce is wet waste. It is waste that is biodegradable and can be composted in the person's backyard. It includes yard waste, kitchen scraps, tea leaves, or coffee grounds, paper plates, napkins, and wine corks. Even pencil shavings, used matches, old t-shirts, latex balloons, pet fur, feathers, dry dog food, dry cat food. The list goes on and on. All of these household waste can be kept out of, kept out of the landfills and have its nutrients returned back to the earth. Dear Deloitte community, I have good news. We now have our very own compost bins right here on campus. <laughs> And I would like to thank Mr. Bernhardt for, and Uncle Scott for helping me build it. If you don't know, Mr. Bernhardt, as shown in the, in the previous picture, is the head of maintenance, and Uncle Scott is my industrial arts teacher. The process from making plans to constructing it took around a month. The construction part started with these long pieces of wood from the old dorm we tore down last year. So these pieces were really old because the dorms were constructed in the 1950s as a British military retreat center. Also, they were covered in rusty nails and screws. And I, I had to remove each and every one of them before cutting. <laughs> I had to bend them the right way. I had to pry it out with a flat tip screwdriver and like yank it out with the back of a hammer. <laughs> it took a long <laughs> time. <laughs> as for the cutting part, Uncle Scott did all of it because he's better. <laughs> For the posts, I just had to cut them to length, easy. But for the door frames, we needed to cut it at a 45 degree angle, glue the pieces together, clamp it tight while the glue dries, and insert bolts for a stronger joint. As for the construction part, Mr. Bernhardt helped mostly with it. Two days before construction, I spent an hour with a student named Ethan under the hot sun. We dug eight holes in total for the post to go in. Sweat was dripping, Christmas music was playing. It was truly an experience. But later, we had to redig the holes because my measurements were off. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Mr. Bernhardt, Tim, another wonderful helper, he's right there. <laughs> Hi, Tim. <laughs> and I put, spent more than two hours putting this whole thing together. First, the post went in, then the supporting planks, then the door, the wire mesh, and we ended up with the roof. And that was it. The day before, the weather forecast was about a 70% chance of rain. I prayed for clear skies, because that was the only day I had to finish this project. At the end, I finished the project with a light drizzle of rain, so I guess that's what, that was the compromise. And there you go, compost bins. It's not that pretty, but it's something. Even though this whole process was a race against time, I truly did enjoy every moment of it. Tim and I had a really interesting conversation with Mr. Bernhardt about his bald head. Tim asked, when you wash your face, do you know when to stop? <laughs> <laughs> and here's how you can participate. Right by the upper field gate, there's a wooden box. And there are brown paper bags by the exit on the stools at the end of the hall. You can take one or two, fill it up with biodegradables, and place it in the wooden box once it's full. Since it might take a few days for it to fill up, you can put food scraps in the freezer to prevent it from smelling bad before you drop it off on campus. If you do not have a brown paper bag, Regular paper bags work too, as long as they do not have a shiny surface or a waxy coating. You can even wrap your waste up in newspaper and just drop it off in the bin. Here are some things to avoid putting into the compost system though. Meat and bone scraps, fatty foods including oils and cheese, and whole eggs. These items may produce odor or attract unwanted pests. 
If you are unsure about what to put into the compost system, a quick trip to Google might help. So, to everyone listening to my speech today, I invite all of you to join me in this effort to make the world more sustainable. Sustainability starts at home. Reduce, reuse, recycle, and compost. Thank you.